are back. The Wolves Only Podcast, powered by JWX. Lacey, what's up, girl? Hi. <laughs> this is uh, this is cool. Um, you are the first. Um, how how do I say this? What's the best way? Aerial and pole instructing coach. What's what? Tell me. Help me. Uh, it's absolutely pole first. Pole. I'm absolutely married to. So oh, aerial oh. comes afterwards yep okay Definitely okay pole coach. pole coach and uh for people that don't know what does that mean oh for well anybody that's ever been interested in learning how to dance around a pole or just use pole for fitness purposes i'm your go-to girl in southwest florida now i think now i've heard of pole fitness um i obviously i'm not your avatar but i'm sure you work with dudes Correct. too but uh yeah I I joke about it I'm like I'll tear the roof right down um but uh but obviously this is a very female dominated space um which is fantastic and I think ladies um one you know sometimes they don't want they get intimidated by the meathead gym stuff and I have my own opinions about that um but they want to do something that's why like you know m- most fitness classes are female dominated Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, if I go, if I, if I walk by, if I'm in my gym and I walk by, um, any class, you know, there's, uh, it's usually, um, most, it's all women. And then, you know, there's a couple dudes, but they're probably, you know, you know, there's, uh, there's a reason for that because women spend so much time thinking constantly and scheduling and organizing and doing everything for their family, their jobs. When it comes to fitness, they just want to be able to walk in, shut up, turn their brain off, be told what to do and walk out happy. That's interesting. Um, because yeah, you know, I, I, I know, I know my wife, she likes, she likes doing classes. Um, but she also trains like a dude. She goes to the gym and like lifts, you know, heavy and, slams weight and stuff like that she's a tiny little thing like you know so i say lifts heavy (laughs) Uh, you know what i mean and then uh but i know that she really does she gets a really good she gets a kick out of uh bar and things like that now i don't know if she would be much to want to do a pole class but maybe i don't know she likes stuff like that you know um maybe so i and, and that's really great the other thing though is i think there might be um, for ladies out there that have seen pole or whatever, I think they, they might be like a stigma about it, you know, like, They're oh, well, that's, you know, you know, but, but I think that is, that's such an antiquated old school, you know, like mindset about something, right? It is absolutely an only an America thing outside okay. of the United States, outside of the United States, pole is. Of, for all ages, there are tiny little three, four, five year olds that are they're training. There's seventy five year olds that are training. There are national champions with from every age range. It's it's not sexualized outside of the United States. It is literally just here. Yeah, and yeah, because I definitely you know we're we're such a product of like what we view and like what we see right and like when whenever like a poll and if you watch a movie and a, a poll is going to be associated with like you know this like a sopranos or like you know like a gangsters like at the strip club and like you know, <laughs> and 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 like stuff like that they don't nobody looks at it for what it really is and it's an art it's, no, it's uh, absolutely an and it's a um it's it's a it's i mean listen i am not and, and i and my my this is just me being honest why my, my only real knowledge of pole is going to the clubs right but i will tell you that it's not my thing anymore but in college and stuff like that you know the boys we would go to the strip clubs and things like that and um and but I but looking back at it, I'm like I'm I'm thinking about the women that I've seen, and you know some of them you're like yeah well, you probably wouldn't want to really take her on the mom, but some of them are jacked. Yeah, some of them are 
super flexible. They're super strong. They're super lean muscles. They've got long dancers muscles. They're there to perform. There's such a difference when it comes. I used to dance. I danced in my late teens. I danced in my twenties. I danced all the way up till I think I gave myself a concussion at 30, hitting my head on the ceiling. That was on the fun. ceiling. On the ceiling. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. My 30th birthday. I wasn't even drinking. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I, I dance and there's a big difference between people that go there because they, they need a job, they need to pay their bills and they, or they need a side hustle. And then there's people that are, they're good at it. They're performers. It's part of, it's part of their DNA. They like to be able to get up and put together choreography and put together routines and big showcases. Uh, it, it takes both. No. And I, and you know what? I don't have any moral dilemma or, or nor would I like, would I ever judge somebody that wants to be a dancer? I think it's great. You know, if, if somebody said to me, you know, like, <laughs> oh, I was a dancer or I am a dancer and I, you know, I'm putting myself through college, um, mm -hmm. you know, or, you know, this is how I, you know, I go away for a couple of weekends on, you know, and, uh, you know, and I make enough money to support my kids. And then during the week when they're at school, I'm able to like support them. I got side hustles, mm -hmm. things like that. I'm all for it. I think it's great, you yeah, know, but, whatever but, it takes, but it's the over it's like, and if you want to kind of go down this road, I didn't. insane just yeah. i had to make sure all the windows are covered nobody should be able to see in and i'm like huh huh, huh? Oh, right. okay but why has it got to be so serious no exactly um and but but let's face it there is a lot of drugs there is a lot of substance abuse in the in the world so and, and but that's mm -hmm. in any industry there was just as much cocaine in a car dealership as there is. In oh, I don't doubt it. <laughs> I don't doubt it at all. Well, yeah, it was all up my nose. Um, <laughs> it, it, it was, it's like, you know, you, you, you can, it's, it's again, it's again, because of all the stigma that everything is amplified. You know, when you take alcohol, you take drugs, you take all that, and then you mix it in with provocative dancing and, sex and all that like you're going to have um i mean you're you're really compiling um moral mm -hmm. you know issues mm -hmm. it's funny though because in in the strip clubs again I, I worked in the strip clubs out and around chicago so it's a certain type of certain type of person out there but the nighttime crowd and the daytime crowd were very different like the, the daytime really? crowd were yeah the daytime crowd they were just like your locals your 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 truck stop guys that are they just want to stop and they want to get off the road or they just you know want something to distract them for you know lunch or middle of the day it's the nighttime crowd that ends up that it's like the animalistic prowess just gets so thick after a certain time it's like between 11 p.m and 3 a.m that's where you get all of the the rowdiness, the problems, the the, that's people when the, that's have the drinking the underlying is. engine. Exactly. That's when yeah. all the drugs and everything gets gets to its heightened point. Yeah. I mean 
typically alcohol and drugs are the common denominator, right? You know, I've never, I've, I have a, one of our coaches, you know, is a hostage negotiator, you know, and I'm like, and me. I, yeah, I asked him, well, I think I was talking about another one who's, who's, uh, but, but the one that's a hostage negotiator and a Texas Ranger, you know, I asked him, I was like, how often are your hostage situations non-drug related? And he's like, it's never, never, never. Yeah. Someone's all fucked up on speed, you know, and freaks out and holds their family hostage in the house. And like, I mean, that's like typical, you know, it's like, so when you deal with that, when you're, again, you have like frat boys fucking drinking all day, go to the strip club. Like, I know, I know this look, but you know, it is what it is, but you it's, know, I don't want this. Ironically, I don't want... ironically, it's not the frat boys. It's not the frat boys. It's the married men. It's the married men that are the worst and spend the most. Yeah, I guess I could picture that. You know, I could picture that. <laughs> you know, the but, single guys yeah. don't care. So they'll walk in and be like, ah, I don't pay for, you know, pay for this. I'm just here to have a couple of drinks and whatever, maybe have a conversation. It's the married men that have a time constraint. They've got somewhere to be, they've got a phone to answer, and they're not supposed to be there. So they want to have as much fun as they can in a very short period of time. And not <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess I could definitely see that. Man, I'm, I, you know, that's not part of my life anymore. Good for I'm, you. <laughs> like, yeah, from a man's perspective, it's like, <laughs> you know, um, you know, and, and, but I get it. Let's, let's talk about this then. Like, you know, the power women have over men just in general or just in the strip club <laughs> strip club club i i talked to i had a conversation about this a while back on a podcast about like women uh, you could be like a three and pretty much take home something decent at six and above no matter what night right dudes don't even get yeah. seen so you, you know, you wonder about this, like why, why are guys, when they do go into a strip club situation, a club situation and the animalistic urges come out of them, but they're not even ever seen, heard or respected or anything. 99% of guys, you got to realize this. They don't even get acknowledged. Women don't even give them the time of the day, of day unless they're good looking with money. Like good looking is not enough. And funny, you got to have those three things really any sort, anywhere, you know, with a woman, right? You could be a 10 dude and get seen by nobody in a night out. And I just think it's, it's insane because yeah, that perspective is, you know, like you talk about the evenings and the animalistic, whatever. And it's like, that's not an excuse. It's an excuse for men to be better men right? That's the facts, but it's not a surprise that they are that way. You know, the married men, they're just unhappy, right? That's why, that's why they are the way they are. Their, their needs aren't met at home, but they're not doing anything either. Most of those men that are, that, that are, that are looking for some sort of outlet in going to the strip club and like getting away from their wives and stuff, it ain't their wife's fault. They're miserable with themselves, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, You're not wrong. but but, uh, but the, the, and, and usually, and, and in my experience, usually the wives are, are actually great wives and, and mm -hmm. they're, you know, um, I'm sure there's always both cases, but you know, when I, when I talk to women and their husbands are becoming pieces of shit and it's very often that I actually have this conversation, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's the rest of their life that is shot out, you know, they're always looking for an escape. But the single guys, it's a, it's surprising that you say that, that the single guys are always respectful because I, I don't agree. I, I mean, I, I, I agree that they're all in, I can't group them all well, together. Well, and maybe they are in that, in, in that setting more so because, but, but the fact that you say like, I don't pay for this and things like that, then they don't get anything because most men don't, most men don't get anything, any acknowledgement from women. They don't. In the strip tough. club, in the strip club, when they say, uh, "Well, because 
I mean, all the women in there, that's their job is to go up and speak to you, whether you're a three, a two, a 10 or a 12, it's their job. That's part of how they make their money. So they're going to talk to everybody and all of them are going to talk to you. So it's the, the single guys, it's, it's really strange. Like it's a certain quality of human being that comes in, sits down and just flat out says, I don't pay for anything. Why would I? That just seems like prostitution or something along the lines of, I, I don't, I'm better than this. I'm not saying and there's anything wrong with you. I'm just saying, don't ask me for money, which yeah. sometimes that's a sales tactic. Sometimes they don't, they want to give you your money, but they don't want, they don't want to just hand it to you. They want you to talk them out of it. So wow. sometimes that's fun. Wow. Sometimes that's fun. Interesting. Yeah, I, I I have mixed opinions about dudes in those situations. Uh, the uh, the other thing is like, you know, just since we're on the topic, like guys that are like all into OnlyFans. Listen, women, go get your OnlyFans page, girls. Like, do your thing, whatever. I don't care. Like that means that I, I I could care less if you do i i respect the hustle and the grind it actually is a business i i have all the respect but have you ever heard uh the saying uh um why would you pay to look at pussy when you could just go in the mirror and see one for free <laughs> that's great you know, I, I just, I don't, again, I, I think women have, have a superpower in them um, over men that the hustle, I love it. I think it's great, you know, and I'm, I'm a lifetime hustler, right? Like I've, I've been, I've not, not hustle like in a bad way, but like I've been a grinder, you know, I, yep. I know that I, I, what I want to do is I want to get things that people want so I can sell that, right? That's mm -hmm. the goal right? Whether it's knowledge, a product, whatever, that's what I always want is to have something of extreme value that I can give to somebody. Mm -hmm. But what women have is like, you have yourself. And, and if you're a dude, you like, that's all we think about, right? Uh -huh. Being you know? single, being single at 40 is it's a whole <laughs> different ball game. It is the weirdest thing in the world to be out here and be single and go, huh, this, this is, this is what dating's like, huh? This is strange. Yeah. I, you know, I can't, I can't imagine. I've been, you know, I've been married for about a year. I've been with my wife for two, a little over two. Um, and then I was single for, a period a time period before um but i really haven't I, I was married divorced engaged and then single um but i don't know what dating is like in, at this age i you know i'm 30 i'm gonna be 38 here in a little bit and uh and it's like i couldn't i don't know what i, I don't i don't even know how to act the strangest thing let me tell you that going back to like the 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 topic of the power women have over men <laughs> that's kind of how i transitioned to this was i'm for 40 i look i don't look 40 not from here down <laughs> at all so going on dates i find myself very uh what's the word i'm looking for i i, I intimidate men not only because i'm boisterous i'm more masculine sometimes than feminine that's just what happens when you grind all the time and you're the one in charge all the time and you're one making the decisions all the time so when people first meet me it's kind of funny because they're like i i, I have such a feminine look to me but then i have all these muscles and and this drive where it's it's almost immediate like i can almost pick up almost immediately off energy like nope this isn't working bye so yeah. to have so many different men and like to vet through them and to have so many men kind of come at you and you start learning all these new personalities that I, I never I spend my whole life within the world of women and old right. people so like to have, be around men now I'm just like this is what is going on what happened well and that's just it so so let me ask you this if I can um are you attracted to men that match your energy I love 
anybody that can teach me something and make me be more ambitious than I already am. That's attractive to me. So, so they have to be high frequency. Yes. Okay. Most men are, are not. Correct. Correct. I'm learning. Most men are bitches. Um, <laughs> okay. And then in that, so in that case, um, you know, and then, you know, most men are fat. Yeah. Most men, once, once they meet me, they're like, well, hell, I think I'm going to have to like hit the gym. I'm like, you can, why aren't you already? <laughs> Come with me. I'll show you. Yeah. Most men, let me, let me tell you, let me give you a good example of how, and most, and a lot of, and most, most human beings, most individuals in general are in this situation where they, they don't, in their eyes, being fit, right? And, and of course, society has made this being fit is above average, but it's not being no, fit is not. the standard being fit is like, okay, being successful and, and making money to where you're not paycheck to paycheck. That is the standard. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's like neutrality. Okay. So like me and Elliot talked about this in our podcast the, uh, two days ago. Okay. If you look at it like a rubber band on two posts. Okay. And that rubber band stretched out against two posts is neutrality. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you have, and nor, most people are being pulled downward, right? Okay. So like neutrality is, is, um, moderate success, uh, mediocre success, really. Okay. Mm -hmm. A fit body, a fit physique. Okay. Um, a good relationship with their wife, uh, a good relationship with their kid. That's where you should be. Right. That's like bare minimum. Mm -hmm. So you look at that. Most people are pulled down to below the bare minimum. Okay. And like to them, that is like way above average. And unfortunately it is, but the real X, the real expectation that you should have for yourself is to be above, uh, you know, is to, like, that should be what you are because that's existing. Okay. Right. So you look at it to have that, to have that rubber band pulled down like that, it takes addiction, right? Mm -hmm. Instant gratification, depression, yeah. depression anxiety, yeah. right? It takes the wrong people pulling you down. It's crabs in a bucket, right? Crabs okay. Bucket. Just <laughs> right. Right. Like, yeah. you know, you, yeah. you know, you, you could, you could put all the crabs in the bucket. There, not, not a single one will get out because they will always be pulling you back in. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So you have to get rid of all of that stuff. You got to put in so much work just to get to neutrality where you should be. Right. Now, how do you get above average? Because to go above, you got to be, you're getting pulled back to neutral, right? You're getting pulled back to that equilibrium. So it seems out of reach for people. And I'm speaking to men in a situation where like, you know, you are a business owner, you're driven, you're in shape, you're smart, you're an entrepreneur, you have all these things that are going for you. And to a man, a normal man nowadays is far below that. You were not lying. <laughs> in the last two years, I have, I have done nothing but go up between mental health frequency, just, just happiness in general, life in general. And I've grown to this point where like, I'm happy with my life and I don't, I'm not necessarily looking for somebody to add to it. I just, you know, I'd like to have somebody to share it with. That's the ideal place to be. Mm -hmm. Right. To have your needs met, to have your, to put yourself in a situation where like having a partner is an addition. It doesn't make it, it doesn't make your life, no. you know, does it make it better? Yeah. If it's the right guy, but take it or leave it or, or woman, but take it or leave it. I'm completely happy on my own. Right. right. I don't want to be the center of anybody's world anymore. That's no fun. That's teenage shit. That's in your twenties, you fall in love and you live the American dream. No, we're past that at this point. Like I am my own American dream. I got myself myself together i just want somebody that's going to be able that i get to share it with right right 
And then, then consider this people our age, right? In our age group. Um, they may be happy with themselves and all of that, but then all then you gotta start to consider the baggage. Right? The exes, the the joint custody, the you know the credit the credit issue. Yeah the you know you know what i mean and it, and it's like you're so now you're looking for somebody who just meets that equilibrium and then doesn't carry <laughs> and and generally I feel gener like you're right? talking about a unicorn <laughs> but it is but but hey it's the same thing for guys too mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. because when you're a guy that's pushing 40 right and you're and and you're like you know, I'm looking for a woman that's 40 that, you know, doesn't have kids mm -hmm. like good luck. Right. Or I'm looking for, you know, one that doesn't have a crazy ex. Good luck. Good luck. Yeah. Right. I'm yeah. Like, especially from, from a woman's point of view, it's like you like women have the the hardest thing because those exes are like they're cockroaches. I, w I don't. Nope. Bye. I won't deal with it. Nope. You go take care of that. You go take care of that. I don't deal with drama. I got too much, too much going on and too much going for me. <laughs> right. Right. But it is, it's like, you know, it's, it's like, you know, both sides of the fence are, are equally as fuck. I don't work their program. Um, what an interesting concept. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. They do like retreats and stuff like that where they, uh, where like they'll like have like, it's like almost like speed dating. I think, I, I think again, I've never done it, but I, I, I do think that it's like similar to that kind of style where they're, they'll put themselves in really uncomfortable situations to meet. Like they'll throw parties basically. Okay. And then like to like be, have to be put in a situation to go talk to a woman and, make her laugh, make her feel some type of way. And you know what I mean? In hopes of whatever, but it is, it's interesting to me that, you know, like that's the world we're in right now, you know? It's crazy. And it, to, to me, what's crazy to me is like, I, I can look in the mirror and know I'm a catch, especially considering mm -hmm. the job that I do. Oh, that tickles everybody's fancy. Like, I don't even tell people what I do until way after I've met them. And I'm like, I know I get seen. I perform all the time. So I know I'm out there. I know I'm being seen. But the quality of, of interaction is less than desirable for the most part. Yeah. Don't lose hope. Oh, the, never. Never, never lose hope. There's always a possibility. <laughs> Someone's out there for me. I know it. <laughs> um, yeah, no, and that thing, you know, that doesn't mean there aren't great men and there aren't great women for guys that are, um, that feel like they're they're lost. And and you know, that's you know, and neither of us, I think, are like dating experts. So, mm -hmm. uh, I don't, I don't know, like, if anybody's if anybody's listen, disclaimer, if you're watching this show <laughs> looking for dating advice. Uh, us, go us. to the next show. Go <laughs> check out my buddies on modern flirting. Like, go somewhere else. This isn't uh this isn't the right place. Um, but uh, but yeah, it is interesting. And um, let's. I want to kind of take this back around to mm -hmm. um, but but where this is basically is kind of goes back to is the strength of you and the power of you, right? 
and you know you have built this life um you have you have built a you're an entrepreneur that has built a business mm -hmm. in um an area that rejects the industry you you could go that far maybe considering where we're physically located ge geographically located um the county that we sit right on the edge of is very conservative um, so yeah, I, any kind of advertising I do. So I sit right on the, the, the Lee Collier, Collier line and anything in Lee Collier, the Lee County, I can use the, the word poll, anything in Collier County, I can't use the word poll at all. So everything has to be the aerial illusions company. Everything has to be aerial down there. Anything. Do you think that takes, do you think that just having poll in the name is, uh, would that is it benefits your advertising? Have you, have you tested Adver both ways? I guess. Advertising. So yeah, we, so anytime we do anything, Collier County, we don't use poll at all. Um, uh, we've tried it and we've gotten our hand slapped. <laughs> so well, yeah. But are they like, legally, are they allowed to do that? The county itself doesn't have a Hooters. It doesn't have a lingerie store. It doesn't have. Oh, really? Anything. So it's like very, yeah. very reformed. Well, on the on the surface, on the surface, I'm sure. <laughs> I see. Because what is not done in the day is always foreseen in the dark. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, but you're in what, South Florida, so you know, you go up to like Miami, and it's like fair game, like. Mm -hmm. It's just a different culture. It's just a different, you know, unfortunately, Naples, Florida is, it's um, it's an older demographic. There's not a whole lot of 20 and 30 year olds in Naples where Lee and Collier or in Lee County, there's a ton. It's because of how the, the, the mighty dollar dictates everything in this area. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. They, it's, it's bullshit though. They shouldn't, they shouldn't be allowed to dictate your act advertising dollars and and what you advertise you know i get it there's politics and everything there's, but it's the politics of it yeah it's the politics yeah. of it anytime i meet or try to collaborate with other businesses that are within naples if they're especially if they're women run businesses we always I, i'm always trying to be tender to the idea that while i would love to do collaborations and i would love to do things together i also want to be sensitive to the fact that this may this while will bring more eyes for both of us, but it may not always be the eyes that they essentially want. Sure. But what if, what if you were able, have you ever like, I mean, what if you were able to um, run content ads, push yourself out there and, and use the word poll, but, make it completely like desexualized well on social media we do there's there's so many different flavors of poll that every time we push out content it's answering a different question it's you know sometimes it's are you ready to feel sexy again and then that content goes that direction and then other times it's like hey are you just you know struggling to like yourself at this point you know, maybe a little workout might help. Maybe coming and being a part of this wonderful team and this group of this community that we've built, maybe just being around us will make you feel better. So it, it's it's all directions, but pole is always right. pretty central on all of the directions we go simply because that's that's what entices people. That's what entices women to, to try the studio for the first time. It's the easiest of all the apparatuses which yeah. pull is hard but out of all of the different aerial apparatuses the silks the spiral lira pull you can still do it and keep your feet on the ground everything else you have to be able to lift all of your body weight into the air which that's terrifying yeah. for most people especially women because they don't have the upper body strength for it that's something that they have to grow and perfect and continue for sure no, I, I, I've tried doing like suspending style stuff before and I'm just so big that it's like, that. I mean, I, I can really appreciate the body strength and, um, that it takes, um, have you, <laughs> on a lighter note, have you ever watched videos of people just jacking up, the, like, like 
uh, ho- at home poll setups going wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've definitely, oh I've watched God. them. I get tagged in every single one of them. Anytime there's a poll on television, oh yeah, I guess that was a dumb Super question. Bowl, I get tagged in all of it. Even, even if it's a cat doing something on like a scratching post, I get tagged in it. I've been known as that oh, okay. poll lady for so many years. Well, you're that pole lady, aren't you? <laughs> like, yes. That is so funny. <laughs> yeah. Anytime I see them, you know, it's always like a big fat lady and she's like trying to be all sexy. And then all of a sudden that pole just goes, gravity does its work, right? The, so just the, slaps the, the problem, poor lady. The problem is, and those things terrify me. So they're tension your tension poles, they're not actually mounted into anything. And if you don't have a contractor's license and know that like with heat and cold, houses expand and contract, which means the the tension on the pole itself isn't always tight. Uh, you get places down here where everything's cement, you don't have to worry about it nearly as much. But you know, on stick built homes, you don't realize when you buy a $150 pole off of the internet and you t- tension it right up. Yeah, it's great for that that first couple of spins, but then when you walk away and you come back in a day or two and you try something else, now the house is either expanded or contracted. And y- if you throw your weight around without checking it, you're going to endanger somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I've seen coffee tables go out. I've seen roundhouse kicks to the face. I've seen people <laughs> slide clear across <laughs> dining rooms tables i i mean i've seen it all i've i get tagged in all oh of it. it's hilarious God. and it's it's scary yeah. like it's cringeworthy for me because i'm like it doesn't have to be this way <laughs> yeah yeah to, to anybody else it's like it's america's funniest home videos mm-hmm. you know but like when you know what you're doing you're like bush league you know yeah. like that is that's so funny i i saw i'm sorry i just i made i thought of that for some reason because i saw one not too long ago i wish i could pull it up here um but uh but yeah it's really funny um on the aerial side of things Mm -hmm. is that picking up steam do people are people getting it are you kidding me so silks and lira is the most common aerial apparatuses and silks are i'm sure you've seen it just looks like two giant pieces of fabric that hang from the ceiling and that women wrap themselves up and in, in, in and out and flip and fall and do all sorts of cool stuff with it. Now, Lyra is a hoop, so it's just a giant big circle. And yeah, yeah. So the, those two things are super popular in the United States. Um, and yeah, that's, that's tried and true. I guarantee you there's more aerial studios within a county than there are pole studios within a county across the nation. Like there's more aerial. aerial really? Oh, God, yeah. Aerial is far more socially acceptable for one. For two, um, you can go much higher on silks and on lira than you can with pole. And it's considered artistic, a little more artistic for when it comes to children. So you have a much larger clientele base with the aerial. Now, with spiral, so our studio just started offering spiral classes and spiral is something that is very popular overseas, but it's not popular in the United States yet. There might, might, might be one spiral studio in any state. Like when I did my research at the time, this was two years ago, there was one in San Diego and it wasn't even a studio. It was just one spiralist that offered private spiral classes. And then there's one circus school here in Florida that happens to have a spiral as well. So other than those okay. two places, like my studio is the only place that offers it. Now, it is the most gorgeous illusion. It, and I might be biased because it's my current obsession but it is the most gorgeous illusion to watch. It always looks like the person is moving in an upward fashion the whole time as they go around in the the spiral and they flip and contort and it's just, it's just beautiful. Oh my goodness. And the best part of it is there's something about going upside down that makes people giggle. Like it really kind of just like their inner child goes, I remember doing this. And then they get upside down (laughs) And they just, they, they're quietly trying to giggle or try like trying to have that moment to themselves, but everybody in the class can hear it. So it gets contagious and like this person starts giggling and then this person starts giggling and then I start giggling and then we're all laughing and giggling and then we're, 
we're going through all these like childhood thoughts. Of, do you remember doing this on like the monkey bars or do you remember hanging upside down on this? It's like a mixture of like the merry-go-round and the monkey bars. And it's just the funniest. I, that's what I've been doing all week in each of my classes, the upside down classes, listening to the giggling and trying to get it recorded just to share it. Cause it's the, it's the best oh, part. That's funny. It's the best part. That's so great. Um, it's funny because I, I, you know, in sobriety, I found uh, that, that like taking that like inner child stuff, the stuff that I used to really enjoy, even as like a teen, before I started drinking and drugging and uh, really like trying to like take myself back to those moments and find enjoyment out of things that I enjoyed before those, the, my darkest times mm -hmm. and even the fun times, right? Like that, 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 but that drinking was involved. And uh, I took my son, uh, my, my wife and I took my son to uh, Disneyland and it was great. Right. right. Um, but I, uh, every, we would go, every ride we would go on, like every roller coaster. If you, uh, if you see the pictures, I'm like, <laughs> why? I just, I don't know. Like I'm having fun in my head, but like as a kid, I'd be like, yeah, yeah. but in like this, <laughs> so everyone, I look like I'm not even like, like not even entertained, mm -hmm. not even having a good time. And, uh, and it's totally not true. Cause I was, but for some reason it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, equate to an expression these days, you know, it goes, uh, well, it is what it is. Sounds like we need to get you upside down. Yeah, yeah, that that really of make you. Me <laughs> you know, I started doing an, an inversion table um, because somebody tried to tell me that it would help with my posture. All that's going to do is decompress your spine. Posture is muscles. Yeah, I don't know. Because first and foremost, I'm huge for an inversion table. And... Uh, Probably top like, heavy too, good lord. <laughs> yeah, you watch you watch these like little people on these inversion tables and they're like able to like you like point their toes and it like levels out and stuff. And I'm like, I get on it and it's just <laughs> this slams right down and it's like not even <laughs> doesn't There's even no work like that. For me. No, no, my ankles just hurt because I'm like <laughs> hanging there and I'm like this is miserable. I need to do something with this. I have the thing. It's like it takes up so much space too. I bought a nice one too, but it's just not, yeah, not what I expected. No. So, um, so what's like the age group of most of your clients in person? In person? So poll is all 18 and up, but the, the majority of our clientele is 30 to 50. Um, air, the aerial arts, it, we have children's classes and adult classes right now. We, because the studio has majority been adult, we're just recently really starting to pull into more kids' classes. So our, our demographic is de definitely still more adult women than um, kids at this point, but we're happily growing into kids' camps and uh, kids' classes. Really? Okay. That's really cool. I mean, it's at least cool that some parents are really embracing it, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that's... Uh, that's that's great. It's a great way. Um, for and let's.
you know that i mean maybe i can't picture my stepbrother doing any pole stuff gray if you want to i support it um <laughs> but uh but win. like you know I, actually i just had i'm not oh i'm not saying that i'm just but people i personally know it's like i don't i don't know you know some you know what i mean and again you know maybe i do it and i fall in love with it and then the next thing you know i i change my name and i get a little show on uh saturday <laughs> you know i might if this whole coaching thing doesn't work <laughs> out i might need to take some classes i mean whatever helps with the side hustle i got you all right all right, all right. <laughs> you can come down or we can do them virtually it doesn't matter hell i even got classes that you can just modules you can just click right through and learn as you go <laughs> um that's great that's really great so what else um oh i i knew what i was gonna ask you uh doing this online i think it's brilliant to do this online yeah um but i think a lot of people may think like oh this is more of an in-person thing how do you uh how do you justify this to somebody to do this online with you to do it on the online there's a couple different ways we can go yeah. about doing it online like we have we have like a membership where you can just watch all the modules and learn as you go if you want to self-teach or if you want to be able to <clears throat> just kind of make sure you're getting all of the foundations that you might be missing in in-person classes, um, which is always nice okay. because then they're all the, the, the lower level stuff. So it's it's not the, the super scary, like 10 feet in the air things. It's, it's learning how to do things from the floor, learning how to get in and out of um, tricks and spins and moves comfortably and safely. Um, but we also offer yep. the virtual option. So if you want to take a, a class at the studio, well, we don't have it yet. Let me rephrase that. We don't have the virtual option yet, but we, our software is set up to do so. We just have to find the correct camera angle to properly be able to offer a virtual style into our current classes that doesn't create a creepy feel for the students that are taking the class. <laughs> I see. So we need to I be see. able to just no. set up our angles and our cameras so that you can only see the instructor during the instructing portions of class. Um, but besides that, that's cool. Well, I'm excited. I know that we've been really. Oh yeah, keep. I'm sorry. Keep going. I, I want to hear more. Yeah. Besides that, the the one on one Zoom, we offer one on one Zoom for um, poll as well. So, which being down here in Southwest Florida, we get a lot of snowbirds. We get a lot of people that come in, they like the teachers, they're comfortable with their teaching style. They like the way um, they learn from them and they have polls at home. So we set it up to where you can do, you know, an hour Zoom and you could have your polls. Like right now, my polls directly behind the camera. I, or, and I would just, you know, swivel my, my computer around and we'd have a nice one-on-one -on -one and we'd work on whatever conditioning or, or tricks or things that, you know, you need to work on for it, either your, yourself or even competitions. Like we've got so many competitions coming up in August. We're currently like our studio typically takes for PSO in Orlando in August, in August. We last year took, I think 12, the year before we had 16 competitors. Uh, I think this year right now we're on track with eight maybe nine i might have a couple more girls talked into doing a competition for the first time okay so yeah it's a lot of reasons to do it privately that's really cool that's really cool um what was i gonna i, I was gonna ask you something and that's really the power of zoom right like zoom is so like it's so great um it's it's just so it's so helpful to do anything on. Yeah, to do but, it online, um, it makes it a lot more. Oh, I know. Accessible. So this was you're the first pole coach that we've ever worked with, and I know we've been really diving in on uh, you know obviously you know getting the brick and mortar and the new brick and mortar you know really leveled up and and getting your ads ran and you know first and foremost but before we like go all, all in on the online program. Um, but working with us, what's that been like so far? I 
was actually just talking to another coach about this because we did a live and, and we were kind of discussing how we we ended up in the, the JWX family. And as she asked how I felt so far, I was like, you know what the best part is? They all call you out on your bullshit, but in the nicest way, and then redirect you. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I like that. Call me out on my bullshit. Not that I'm bullshitting, but just, hey, if this... Okay, obviously this isn't working, so let's pivot, let's shift. Let's try something new. And I yeah. like that. I like all of the, co I'm just talking about leadership. The amount of, I don't know if it's just because I'm a pole person and I'm slightly different than everybody else, or maybe I just like, I'm more, I take more attention. I don't know on social media, but I get so much interaction with the other coaches and it's, it's fun. It's playful. And it's a nice way for us all to get to know each other and start integrating into each other's worlds and, and lives. It's kind of cool. That's the brilliant thing about two things, mentorship and community, right? We know you've been an entrepreneur. We know entrepreneur is, entrepreneurship is eating a lot of shit and occasionally winning, mm -hmm. right? That's, that is the name of the game. We're going to eat so much shit. It's stupid. We expect we expect that. So with mentors, you know, we've we've eaten the same shit. You know what I mean? And uh, and we've grown a we've developed a uh, you know a taste for it. <laughs> um, but we but we are able. We've learned from it. You know, we've eaten it, and maybe I've eaten more shit, and I've had to recover from more shit eating. So we're able to navigate on that. You know, and. Yeah. So telling it how it is and then offering a different perspective or a different direction uh, is is incredible. Right. Mm -hmm. And we may eat more shit. Mm -hmm. Right. But but at least we can we know like, OK, I can bounce back from here because of, you know, this new skill set or this new direction mm -hmm. or, you know, knowing what to expect if this doesn't go accordingly. You know what I mean? And that's that's the biggest part. Mentors are not meant to necessarily teach you exactly what to do. Of course, that's part of it. But the biggest, most valuable lessons that you get is learning what not to do. Correct. And I'm bumping through. And then learning how to recover. Yeah, how to recover. Yeah, I, I think so, too. And yeah, yeah, the rebound is is massive, right? Um, and then from the community aspect, and the reason that I, the, my vision for this was to be community um, was because I, I've learned from, uh, networking with other people in a similar industry. Right. And, and that's what it really is all about. There is, this is such an industry with like no overhead. It's just you, especially on the online coaching side of it. Um, it's just you and you don't necessarily, uh, it's like, it's all, it's all on you. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But when you add a team element to that type of industry, it's like NASCAR right? It's just the driver, but he has yeah. a team. And then there's other drivers that are on their team, right? Same with golf, you know, and, and a lot of, uh, in a lot of individual sports, you still have a team that, you know, you want to push and learn from one another. Um, and I, and I looked at it just like that, you know, like, especially in extreme sports, you know, you have a teammate, you know, you have somebody and you have a team that's behind you, right? And then you go to camps against people that you're against, but you push each other to get better. And I wanted to build it in that, that in that regard. I think that a lot of people start agencies or they have this idea for mentorship programs. And they and they, of course, you have to teach everybody individually, but they don't have like a real non diluted, undiluted vetting process or or actual um attendance that uh you know that it, it, it is the way it is we vet everybody out that was right? one of my questions turn a lot that of was one of my out. questions when i when i sat with you guys the first time i was like you just take everybody you like no i was like oh okay can, but now that you're in can you tell yeah. you can definitely tell you know like some of the most amazing bonds are uh are, are in in out of, come out of our our community some great friendships some really wonderful friendships no one's gotten married yet <laughs> but uh and i don't think any sort of relationship relationship thank god i don't want to have to deal with that when that goes south we're all too far uh, like apart but, uh, that. Oh, yeah. 
Remember what I said earlier? <laughs> Zoom's a powerful <laughs> Zoom's a powerful tool. Bless their heart. They can make that work. Um, we have well, we have a code of conduct, right? You signed it. Uh and that's and that's important, you know. But again, uh it's really cool. So what do you see uh for the future? What what's I mean, I know right now we're really focused in on brick and mortar and we're kind of doing the coaching thing at the, the mm-hmm. online OFC stuff as we go. But what's what's in the future for you? I'm not talking about goals. I'm just talking about what your expectations are. My expectation for myself? For my business? Your business. All of it. You can answer that however you want. I don't care. I'm it's your excited. show. I'm I'm excited for what's gonna come. I'm excited because not only are we gonna continue our brick and mortar, we're gonna do our online stuff. We're gonna grow even more into the online stuff, but we're gonna start producing curriculum and thing that pops up. I work very hard on that. Awesome. Yeah, SEO is very important. Uh and if I'm looking to take to uh, learn from you online, uh, you're going to want to find us at Colon Aerial Fitness either on social media or you can just type that right into you know, Google itself, colonarialfitness.net and take you right to our website and you can contact us. That's awesome. Lacey, this was fun. We kind of, we were kind of all over the place and uh, I'm glad it went that way. That's okay. I love it. You know, like I said, there are no rules. We just take it in whatever direction we want. Um, And uh, and I I think you're great. I think that you're going to be, I mean, you're already amazing. I think you're going to do an amazing job with us. And um, I'm stoked, you know, from day one, I've been stoked to work with you and that hasn't changed and I don't expect it to. Uh, Let's fucking get out there. Let's kill it. Um, and guys definitely go check out, um, at pole and aerial fitness. Um, is that, that's yeah. it, right? Or is it South it Florida? It says pole and aerial fitness, SWFL, so Southwest Florida. But if you put enough of it in it, you don't need to yes. worry about the SWFL. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so definitely check, yeah, go to the Instagram, shoot, uh, shoot Lacey a follow. Yeah. And uh, if you guys like this, if you if you enjoyed this, make sure you click subscribe. Make sure you comment below. Make sure you like all of this, share it, all the things that we need for the algorithm to get our mission and Lacey's mission out there. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, we'll catch you next time. Lacey, thank you so much oh, for joining my me pleasure, on this. As always. All right, guys, that wraps up an episode of the Wolves Only Podcast. Listen, if you guys like what you heard, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like and comment. Help us get our message out there. If you want to work with our team, go ahead and click the link in the description below. Schedule a call with us. We'd love to get you on. We really appreciate you guys listening. And uh, if you have any other questions, you can reach out to us on all forms of social media. Thank you so much.